Mills. I am the healthcare industry council lead here at West Michigan Works, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the healthcare industry as a whole. Let's get into it. When we think about healthcare, most of the time we will first think of hospitals, doctors, nurses, really that clinical side of healthcare. But healthcare is really so much more than that. Um, comprised of health systems, hospitals, private practices, a ton of different specialties. Really, healthcare's main goal is the maintenance or improvement of healthcare through prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and recovery. So, you really have to think outside the box when it comes to healthcare and careers in healthcare. There is such a large variety of things that make up healthcare as a whole. So, like I said, there are lots of different types of healthcare providers. We do have those main hospitals, the things that you normally think of, and those will be your inpatient care. We also have family practice, which is your primary care provider. Those are the people you would go see if you need your annual checkup, or maybe you have a cold. You can go to your primary care provider. And then we have specialty, like I said. Specialty can be things like your ear, nose, and throat doctor, or maybe you have a bad back and you need to go see someone for that, or you're having a hard time breathing, so you can go see a pulmonologist. Those are all considered specialties. And then you also have long-term care, which can be things like um, retirement facilities or rehab facilities. And then there are also things like research, lab science, and so much more. Um, so there on the side, you can see some of those local big players that we have in healthcare. Spectrum Health, Metro Health, Mercy Health. Those are all some of our biggest healthcare um, providers and systems as a whole. They have almost all of the types of healthcare encompassed within those big systems. And then you also have people like Mary Freebed and Holland Home who do some of those long-term care, rehab um, type things, and then also Pine Rest, which is our mental health services, which is another large part of healthcare as a whole. There are so many other people and parts of healthcare in West Michigan that aren't listed here. These are just some of the big players. So there are so many other pieces of healthcare in our area. So now I'm going to show you a little video about why you might want to choose healthcare as a career.
about that video is it really shows a large range of things that you can do in healthcare from clinical to administrative and everything in between. So what I want to show you now is some of the hot jobs in healthcare right now in this region. So this is just a short list of the, of the um, hot jobs right now. So things like medical and health service managers, dental assistants, medical assistants. These are um, a, a wide, wide, wide range of things you can go into depending on your education level, anywhere from just a certificate to a master's degree. Um, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit as well. But healthcare is a great option if you're wanting to learn and grow in your career and maybe not end up where you started. You can also always start at an entry level and work your way up. So this will just show you a little bit about the different range of things that you can do and the money you can make. So for example, when we look at medical assistance, the median hourly is a little less, but the openings, medical assistants are always, always needed in this area. And all you need to be an MA is a certification. So it's a really great entry point into healthcare. So we also have things like dental assistants, mental health counselors, physician's assistants, which of course is getting into those master degree and licensures. And then you also have things like phlebotomists, which works in our lab. Phlebotomist works with um, blood. You can draw blood and then test that blood. And then surgical technologists, which both of those also only need a certification. So there really is such a huge range of places you can get into healthcare. Um, from right out of high school up until, you know, you, you've already gone to grad school. So there is such a great entry point no matter where you are in life. So let's talk about the typical job requirements. Before you get the job offer in healthcare, you're going to need anything from a certification, a two-year degree, a four-year degree, a master's, um, depending on the kind of job you want. It is also great to know um, a little bit of medical terminology. And in healthcare, it really is important to be adaptable, flexible, have good communication skills, active listening, critical thinking. All of those things are really great when working with people. And most of healthcare is going to be that human interaction, whether you're at the bedside in a clinical setting, or maybe you're administrative in human resources, most of the time you are going to be a, going to have to have those good communication skills. And then of course, before you get the job, a good resume is always a great place to be. And there are so many resources for building your resume and making sure you have a good aesthetically pleasing resume to get you that job. So let's talk about after the job offer. After you get the job in a healthcare organization, you will have to go through a background track background check, drug screenings, and have your immunizations up to date. Um, you're going to have to write reports and evaluations depending on your, your position. And then of course that pay range is pretty large depending on the position. Like we just saw, you can get those entry level certification positions, or you could even start somewhere like nutrition services or environmental services and work your way up depending on what sort of education you want to go into. The other great thing about healthcare is that you can work first, second, or third shift. So it really depends on what kind of work environment you're looking for. But those clinical positions do typically require working on your feet for long periods of time. Okay, so we have a question now, a poll for all of you. How much do you think is the healthcare industry projected to grow between 2019 and 2029? Okay, so the answer is actually C, by 15%. Um, this is actually a lot faster than average, and it's adding about 2.4 million new jobs before 2029. The healthcare industry is such a fast-growing industry right now, um, and it really is a great place to be. So let's talk a little bit about healthcare in Michigan. Healthcare is actually Michigan's largest private sector employer. Um, so in 2017, there were over 600,000 Michigan residents working in healthcare. Um, it's such a large industry in Michigan as a whole. 
So in 2019, direct healthcare workers earned more than $38 billion in wages, salaries, and benefits. So that's another great thing about healthcare. The benefits that come with working in healthcare are really great. Um, not only in obviously healthcare um, insurance, but other things like time off, those types of things, the benefits are always are usually really great. So hospitals alone employ more than 230,000 individuals in the state. So Michigan hospitals and health systems really do work daily to protect residents' health and wealth well-being. Um, in the process, they provide nearly 40% of the healthcare's economic activity in Michigan, which is crazy. So hospitals and health systems support both physical and financial wellness. All right, so we're going to go into another question. So which of these occupations do you think are not present in healthcare careers? So this is a bit of a trick question. It's none of the above. All of these are present in healthcare systems and so much more. Um, so not all occupations in healthcare are directly clinically re related. And we are gonna take a little talk a little bit more about that. But let's say you wanna work in social work. There are always social workers in hospital systems, marketing, communications, public relations, fundraising, all of those are also present. And then even things like retail. Most hospital systems will have a gift shop, um, and that is an entire part of the business as well. So you can work in retail when it comes to um, healthcare as well. So let's talk a little bit about those non-clinical work opportunities. There are the normal things that you would think of like human resources. Um, then there's also fundraising. Most healthcare systems are nonprofit or some are community hospitals, which means there's a lot of fundraising and development behind the scenes that goes into running the healthcare system and the program. There's also things like marketing and communications, those commercials that you see for healthcare institutions. Those are people behind the scenes that work for the healthcare organizations that are creating those, those marketing materials and those messages. There's also office management. Um, in clinical settings, you still need someone to run the office, bill insurance, things like that. Um, administrative assistance, same sort of thing. Nutrition services is a great entry point when it comes to healthcare and a non-clinical work opportunity. You can um, work with food services to deliver food to patients or perhaps work in the cafeteria. And that is a great entryway, a good foot in the door to getting into other parts of the hospital system. Same with environmental services, um, that's also a great foot in the door. You can also do things like facilities, um, groundwork, plumbing, those are all parts of the healthcare system that are so needed to keep everything running smoothly. So now I'm going to show you a couple videos about some of those non-clinical work opportunities.
So as you can see from those videos, there are um, opportunities. Maybe you don't want to go into a clinical setting, but you still love the idea of healthcare. There are always opportunities to getting involved. So now I want to um, have you guys throw some things in the chat box. So what are some assumptions that you've made about healthcare, about the healthcare field? Do you have maybe some preconceived notions about what it would look like to work in healthcare? For example, you might assume you need a medical or nursing degree to go into healthcare, or you don't like blood, so you never really saw yourself working in healthcare. So go ahead and put some things in the chat, maybe some, some assumptions you've made, other things that you think about when you first think about working in the healthcare field. Awesome. So yes, there are lots of common misconceptions when it comes to healthcare. Some of those are all healthcare jobs are clinical, which we know that to not be true. Um, of course, we've seen all the other jobs that you can have in, in the healthcare industry that aren't clinical. But of course, those we are based around that health and well-being of the community. So even if you would love to be able to help people, those non-clinical opportunities are still supporting what those clinical people are doing. Another common misconception would be to work in healthcare, you need an advanced degree, um, which is also not true. There are lots of entry points, um, entry level jobs that might not need, uh, that might need just a certificate or not even. Another common misconception is that entry level jobs don't leave room for growth. Um, so a lot of times people think that when you get into healthcare, that's where you are. But there are many great career paths to explore. We're gonna look at some one of those next, but there's always room to move up in a healthcare organization. Um, there's also a misconception that clinicians would be stuck in that role. Um, but today there are hundreds of different opportunities for clinicians outside of the standard clinical role. Um, for example, many pharmaceutical companies look for clinicians for a variety of roles. Consulting companies are always looking for clinicians. Management looks for those willing to acquire advanced education and, the gain the, and to gain those necessary skill sets. So even if you go into a clinician role, that doesn't mean you're necessarily stuck at the bedside. So another misconception is that there are so many applicants and that I feel like my resume is gonna get lost in the stack. And while that might seem true, every time you apply for a job within a large healthcare system, be persistent. They likely do get hundreds of job seekers and applications a day, but be sure to follow up, send emails, um, make phone calls, be persistent to be able to put your name at the top of the mind. Oops. All right, so let's talk about one of those career pathways. Let's say you ideally would like to be a nurse. A nurse is a great way to be in the healthcare system, but you don't want to go to nursing school directly out of high school, which is totally fine. You can start in a nutrition services, which is food services. Um, and then maybe while you're working and delivering patients their food, getting that patient interaction, you get your certificate to be a certified nursing assistant. So then you get more into the patient care aspect. And as you can see, you can work your right way up, getting a little bit more education each time. You can become a certified phlebotomist, which is just one more certificate. And then from there, you might get your associate's degree and become a technician. You could be a radi radiologic technician or maybe a surgical technician. Um, and then from there, those um, that associate's degree will help you get your bachelor's in nursing science, which will eventually get to you to that nursing position that you were hoping for. So I know that it can be daunting sometimes to think, I want to be a nurse. I'm going to go to nursing school, and that's what I'm going to be. But a lot of times it's great to kind of get your foot um, in the door and see if you like the healthcare industry. Start small and work your way up. Um, so there are lots of different career pathways. This is just one of many. All right, another poll for you guys. Last one. So I want you to, to choose which one that fits you most. A, I like helping people. 
B, I want to invest in my future. C, I thrive under pressure. D, I'd like to work in a stable and meaningful environment. E, two or more of the above, or F, none of the above. Okay, awesome. So if you identify with any of these statements, healthcare could be a great option for you. Not everyone has the personality or the passion that's required in a field where you're helping people, but the massage therapist, the medical assistants, medical office and health information techs, dental assistants, they all graduate from that medical training and have shown that they wanna help people. So if you have the drive to help people, and make people feel better, then you really can consider a career in, health, in the healthcare field. If you have a passion for education, or you recognize how important career training is for your future, healthcare also can be great for you. Um, with a job in the healthcare field, long after you've left career training behind you, you'll still be learning new things each day. The healthcare field changes and evolves all the time, so you'll need to work to stay ahead of that, and it's a great way to encourage yourself to be a continual learner. So when thinking about working under pressure, the healthcare field sometimes requires you to work under pressure or under a deadline. And you can draw lessons from those experiences and not just from schooling. So if you're able to work under pressure, then the medical field really could be great for you as well. And when you think about what sort of environment you want to work in, a medical office or health care facility is a really fulfilling environment and it really is stable. You never know what's going to happen in the world, but people are always going to need health care. So for some people, it's the type of place they aspire to work in, but healthcare facilities are clean, they're stable, and the work is meaningful. And if none of these statements fit you, that doesn't necessarily mean that healthcare isn't for you. There are lots of different avenues, as we've seen, to getting into the healthcare industry. So maybe you do like to work a little bit more by yourself. There are tech, technology um, jobs in healthcare. There are um, analytics health jobs in healthcare. There are always ways that we can loop people into healthcare, no matter what kind of environment you're looking for. And just a reminder that healthcare, um, healthcare workers are heroes. So if you want to really truly make a difference, healthcare could be the place for you. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Now we are going to hear from a couple healthcare employers. So we have someone from Holland Home as well as Spectrum Health, and they're going to be telling us a little bit about what they do on a daily basis and answer some of those questions about healthcare as an industry. Okay, well, thank you both for being here. So I'm going to give you each an opportunity to kind of introduce yourselves, um, get, tell us a little bit about your organization and your role there. So, um, Doug, why don't we start with you? Sure. My name is Doug Himmeline. I'm the Vice President of Human Resources for Holland Home. At Holland Home, uh, we're a senior community. We have a variety of different um, specialties such as skilled nursing, assisted living, home care. We have hospice, uh, facility services um, department also here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've been around since um, 1893. Um, we're one of the oldest and largest continuum care communities in um, West Michigan. Awesome, thank you. And Charlotte? Perfect. So I'm Charlotte Bendis, and I'm the manager of talent selection at Spectrum Health. And I kind of mirror what um, Doug shared, right? We, we have a lot of different types of positions at, at different facilities, including um, long-term care, hospice. Um, we have a, a large division that does um, care within people's homes, right, through the visiting um, nurses group. And we also um, hire folks into our ambulatory settings and our inpatient hospital settings. It's a lot of variety. Yes, of course. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so we'll get right into it. Um, so our first question is, what traits and skills do you look for in a potential employee? So Charlotte, why don't we start? 
So, um, so I'll highlight three things. Um, so, so first, um, we're always looking for someone that can work well within teams, right? Healthcare is a, a team sport, as they say. So it's really important for people to be brilliant at the basics, right? Specific to what their role and their set of responsibilities are. But we're always looking for that ability for them to work within that team setting, right? Because team-based care is super important to to, um, to patients and their in their families, right? So that's the first trait. The second trait, I would definitely say, is the the person that can be the continuous learner, right? So healthcare is always changing. I mean, this year has really put this into focus, right? So as we have um, reacted to COVID. Um, COVID being potentially in our communities and then, you know, being in our communities and and how that um, impacts how we deliver care to, to patients, right, it has brought a lot of learning. Um, and so in 2020, it's got a special context behind it, um, but always um, things are changing and we're improving in, in healthcare, right? So that person that can be the continual learner um, is, is super important to us. Um, and then the third and last trait that, that I think we always focus on is that person that can really be a good communicator, right? So there's so many different people that we interact with um, as healthcare providers, right? So it's not only the patient, but the family member, and then just to each other, right? So um, those are the top three that, that I would highlight. Awesome, thank you, Doug. So the first thing that I always look for um, when I'm looking for a person is I wanna find someone that their heart wants to do this type of work. It's relationship type work. And if you think of the seniors that you touch the heart with on a daily basis, they wanna to get to know you. And it actually will show. So if you're compassionate in your job um, and wanna work with people, especially in my industry, it's seniors, um, that will actually show. So I always drill down to the heart and you want to do this. You want to be with people. You want to provide service and care. Um, if you're not that warm, touchy-feely person, this is probably not the right industry, um, which, you know, there's different occupations that actually um, I have. Even in my company, I know Spectrum, you have a variety of different positions like finance is more of a do-yourself type job. But if you're thinking of a clinical job, definitely you got to follow your heart and your soul, and it, it actually always shows through. So the compassionate care is key, and I'm gonna echo a little bit um, what Charlotte just said. You want someone that wants to continue growing and learning as an individual. Do you have to know everything coming into uh, one of our positions? No, there's a lot of entry-level jobs that we can train you to come into it, and from food service to our nurse aides, um, we have, um, Again, both areas, we can train you for the job and they're great entry level um, positions just to get your foot into healthcare, just to see if this is the right environment for you. Definitely, thank you. Um, we have talked, we will talk a little bit about um, career pathways and things like that too, so that's a great point as well. So how would you encourage a student to explore the different occupations in healthcare? Doug, why don't we start with you this time? Yeah, it is definitely a challenging environment right now. Um, COVID has really put a turn in our normal routine. And um, normally it's like we have a lot of volunteer opportunities and I love our volunteers to come in from high school kids all the way to senior citizens that volunteer. Um, but you know, right now there's no volunteering taking place. So the next best idea is go to the internet. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities you can learn from the internet and um, do your personality test. Um, you can actually go out to visit different companies. They have websites that actually shows different jobs that can help um, educate the person. I'll be glad when we get back to our normal of my career quest. Um, you actually come in for the shadowing event um, that was put on hold um, this year. And um, yeah, and normally just volunteering would be my my recommendation. 
So I would mirror that as well, right? There's a, a lot of things that um, that we always have available that we don't have available right right now. Um, but I'll, I'll really call out that most of our academic partners have um, really great resources um, to dig into what is the day in the life? Like what is the expectation? What tasks and activities will I be doing if I have this, this type of role? And I know um, there are some resources available um, that are more video based, right? So rather than reading about it, you're actually experiencing someone in their, in their workspace. Um, and that individual that's that's doing the video is talking about the tasks and activities, but you're actually seeing them in the the setting, right? So some virtual reality type of material is is available. So I know our academic partners um, at at all levels have some of that available. I know that the library is also a great resource um, for career exploration, right? And um, a lot of times we can get to those resources and we can get to them virtually that are available through the, the public library. Um, and I, I know sometimes people think about going to the library, like actually physically going to the library. And I know some libraries now do have open, um, open hours and they're doing it on a limited safe basis. Um, but you'd be surprised if you call into your libraries what they can help you get access to, right? And so um, I would suggest that. And then also just networking with family and friends, you know, especially here in West Michigan, um, you don't have to work too hard to find someone that works within healthcare and has that, that um, you know, frontline view of healthcare careers. And all they, although they might be in a different position than the one that, that a student might be looking at, they interact with all different levels of people within healthcare. So they might be able to share some information um, about that role. And uh, definitely if you're looking for entry level uh, positions within healthcare, often just asking in your family and friend network, you're gonna get some great recommendations. Awesome, thank you both. Um, yeah, so there, there might be actually one more idea, Ellie. Um, the school career counselors, actually, I bet you they have touched base with a variety of different healthcare um, companies. I know several have came to Holland Home. I bet you several have came to Spectrum. And um, that career counselor would be a good stopping point for a student right there at the school. Yeah, absolutely. So, Go ahead, Charlotte. I was just going to say too, like is for some of the positions that that we have within our organizations, right? They they are a position in which we're going to provide all the training and support. So sometimes the best way to kind of get a feel for all the different kinds of careers that exist within healthcare is to start into one of those positions, right? Those true entry point positions in which you're going to be provided all of the, the support and training because then you get the insider view yourself, right? So sometimes it's an easier um, decision to kind of jump into healthcare than, than it would seem. Yeah, definitely. So we did talk about a little bit with the youth about common misconceptions when it comes to healthcare, things like you don't have to work in a clinical setting to be part of healthcare, things like that. So what are some of the common misconceptions you guys have come across in your, in your time in healthcare? Uh, let's start with you, Charlotte. So this, this is a really good question because I think it really depends on who the person is, right? So, so everyone as they're building a career has their own set of personal um, experiences. But, but one thing I, I often hear is that people are really kind of focused on one position, like one type of work, right? So, so maybe they're thinking, well, I'll, I'll get a certification, right? I'll become a certified nurse assistant. I'll become a medical assistant, right? They're like really specific to, to a single role, right? And I think when they get involved in healthcare, that, um, that they're very surprised at all the different um, tracks that somebody pursues after they have that entry level position, right? So if you, if, if um, Doug and I both, if we lined up a hundred people that work in healthcare and they've all been in healthcare in for five years, right? And we just lined them all up and we went one by one by one, right? And we said, 
tell us your story, tell us your story, right? We would hear these this variety of things, right? And we might, um, we might stand up a hundred of them that all started in the same type of position, right? So we could, we could stand up a um, hundred people that are CNAs, right? Certified nurse assistants. And then five years into their career, we would ask for their stories, right? And they would tell us a lot of different things. Right, and so I think one of the misconceptions um, that, that we talk through all the time is that where you start is where you end up and that, you know, that that's it, right? Like you're coming into healthcare and, and that's your job, right? Because that's not really what it ends up being, so. Yeah. So I'm actually gonna expand on that, Charlotte. That is my story. Um, when I was um, in college, I was a CNA. I went and got my certification. Great job, very flexible, worked great with my college. Never was a nurse aide, quite frankly, never babysit anybody before. So it was a, a very new experience for me. Um, I'm aging myself, 23 later, years later, I'm a vice president of human resources in the same industry. So truly um, what you just said on career pathways is, um, is very true. And, um, and that's, that is a, a talking point for someone. So yeah, um, like Charlotte said, we actually have a variety of different positions like grounds. Um, I see the transitions into different roles um, into our project uh, or construction area. We're more than just um, a nursing home and Spectrum is more than just a hospital. There's finance jobs, there are um, facility service jobs, there's operations jobs, there's clinical jobs, obviously. But um, we need a variety of different positions and it's just more than just um, the clinical area. So um, that, is, that is the biggest concern. And you know what, if you're someone that um, doesn't wanna go in to do the patient care, we have a lot of other jobs that, that can meet the needs. So you just gotta think broad and, and that's the thing. Yeah, our operations require a lot of support. Right, so, so often as I make presentations, I kind of tease about the number of toilets that Spectrum has to keep operational, which is, is like a little funny segue, right, when you're introducing yourself to, you know, a room of 300 people. Um, but, but this is true, right? We have a lot of lights that need to stay on, um, and um, we, we do have a lot of toilets and sinks, right? And so not only do they need to be maintained, right, but from a true facility, right where we are actually we're working on some screening for plumbers this morning so it's kind of top of mind right that we we really hire into almost every um, specialty area right you mentioned your grounds right like keeping your the grounds in and around your facilities nice right for your um, for your residents to walk around and it's just so important for emotional health right and so um, you know, that that component is something that people don't often think about when they think of healthcare, right? All the variety of positions that go around with nutrition, right? And there's business side nutrition types of positions, right? There's actually the food preparation and, and delivery side, right? There's purchasing positions that go along with that. So, um, you know, if, if you think about healthcare in West Michigan, right, with all employers, it's, it's a little bit of a ecosystem, like a mini city of operational needs, right, within West Michigan, right, because we're all running facilities, um, it requires technology support, right, because there's, there's nothing out there that doesn't require any technology support any longer, right, we, we all are technology companies. Right, so there's that component. And then we consume a lot of goods and services, right? So from the finance, HR, purchasing side, and these are all complements to our core clinical delivery positions, right? Which is what people often think about when they think of healthcare, right? Is that person that is um, meeting you either in an outpatient setting or in a residential or inpatient setting. That's awesome. Thank you. Great advice. Anyone a plumber? Go ahead and contact. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I, need a, I need a plumber. <laughs> um, so we talked about this a little bit and maybe let's reframe our next question to be, if we weren't in a pandemic, 
what types of volunteer opportunities or opportunities for students to get involved in your healthcare would be good for someone looking to get into the healthcare field? So Doug, you can go first because you already mentioned this a minute ago. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, so you know, we heavily rely on our volunteers um, at our organization. You know, um, they, they're from greeting people at the main entrance. So we have volunteers at our front desk. Um, touching the people's hearts right when they walk through the door, all the way actually providing activities, um, delivering meals. We have volunteers, um, you know, um, our, we, we have volunteers in the summertime planting our flowers that come through. Um, so gardening is a, a something. And um, we can't have volunteers actually going up on the floor providing clinical care though, but they're on the floor doing other things, maybe doing um, Open with um, food prep, um, delivering the food, um, delivering supplies. Sometimes we actually have volunteers and putting together packets or folders. We're trying to get rid of paper, but we're not there yet. And um, there, we got people in our office actually that are volunteers. Um, when we talk about internships, um, every single department takes internships um, from clinical to IT, HR, our volunteer services, our life enrichment, our rec therapy department. And um, yeah, those are those are very powerful and important, and it's it's actually I think the best way for someone to get the true life experience um, is to come in to volunteer. So I strongly recommend it, and I I think people would be surprised when they actually talk to a volunteer department if they show them what they're interested in. I bet you the company has that opportunity, and um, we're very creative in our volunteers, and sometimes we don't even think of what we believe is a volunteer, but someone comes to us with an idea, it's like, you know what, I think that'd be very powerful and great for everybody. So, so I would encourage people, once we get through this pandemic, reach out to companies for opportunities and, and talk about what you like to do. And, and I bet you most companies will accommodate it. I would mirror all those comments and I want to kind of highlight a comment, Doug, that you made early in this conversation about really our work is relationship driven. Right. So one of the really powerful things about volunteering is not only are you acquiring all this lived experience, right, you're actually experiencing the environments and you're doing something meaningful, but you're building relationships with those that work, you know, within the industry, right. And so that social capital, those connections become really, really important. Um, and I always kind of reflect on this in two directions, right? Sometimes someone comes in and they volunteer and they get a little bit closer to a certain type of position and they determine, I, I had interest in that, but that is not for me. Like they're like, you know, I, now I don't want to do that. But almost always as we have those conversations with someone that is determining, well, I don't want to do that. There's always a secondary thought that they have, but I do want to do this. Right. And so that's, you know, that's one of the ways that volunteering or getting exposure, even through like a, a position that's entry level, that is not, you know, the long term goal and objective is helpful because it is those relationships and those conversations that you have with people that end up being um, a great guide, right? Because you can only learn so much virtually. You can only learn so much by reading through, you know, pros and cons of any um, type of work, right? But you get those relationships and, and somebody advising you and it's really pretty powerful. Definitely. Well, thank you both so much. Um, I'd also encourage, we at, in my time in healthcare, we had lots of people who started as volunteers or interns and worked their way up. It's such a great entry point. So our final question, and maybe the most important, is what is your favorite thing about working in healthcare? Doug, let's you wanna go first, Doug? You know, um, healthcare is um, a job that's very secure. You will never ever um, go through economy downturn where you do not have to have healthcare. So if you're looking for a secure job, um, that's not my favorite part. It's an indirect thing that, um, you know, I, I provide for my family um, that I want to secure a job in life and not have to worry about the ups and downs of the economy, which which does happen. But, um, you know, it's the relationship piece that 
even at my level, that um, touches my heart. You know, it starts the, the light of my day, quite frankly. Knowing what, um, I'm here to serve people, and, and that's what um, my role is at a high level that I'm serving our customers that it drills down to. So it, it, it does go back to that relationship piece that I mentioned at the very beginning. Um, you know, I'm just not counting numbers um, or, or producing a good, which is needed for our, our world. But um, I'm here actually providing a service touching people. And, and again, if that's where your heart is taking you to um, provide care to people in a variety of different methods, and, and, and again, I'm not touching the individuals, but um, I'm providing people that can do that. Um, that's what I what draws me to healthcare, and, and I've never left it actually in my 23 years of working. Um, I remained in this type of environment because I do truly enjoy it. So I would mirror all of those things, right? So you and I could probably say ditto to, to all of our comments. But I, I would add that um, what's, what's really interesting about working in healthcare, right, for decades is the variety of things, right? It is always changing and evolving, right? I, I would say it's challenging many days and never boring. But I think at the end of, end of the day, right, it's the ability to inspire hope right and and you can't say that about all jobs like many jobs are challenging many jobs um are you know they're they're a good job and and they provide for your family but at the end of the day when you work in healthcare you know that you're doing more so not only are you working hard right not not only you know do you enjoy the tasks and activities right the work that you're doing but you know it has a greater purpose right because you're impacting so many people right not not only the resident or the patient but their entire families and everyone that they connect with in the community so when you help someone stay well or get well and then you learn about all the things that they do in their lives right you just start to to really be connected to the magnitude of the importance of of our work and it doesn't matter what what you do in healthcare Right, Doug is reflecting on he's not at the bedside, neither am I, right? We're in, um, in administrative types of roles, right, in human resources. But every single day, we're impacting care of West Michigan community members, right? And so um, that's something really unique about healthcare. It doesn't matter where you work or, or what you do, but you know you're impacting the health of the community. Right. And um, I mean, for me, even on a challenging day, and there are a few in healthcare, right? This this year has been very interesting to to be involved in healthcare with COVID. Um, but there's this greater purpose to to the work that we do, which is really nice to have. Yep. Well, I agree with both of you on that. Um, my time in healthcare, I think collaboration, working with people, it's all all uphill from there. So that's all I have. Thank you both so much for being here. Um, I'm, I'm sure the youth got a lot out of this, so thank you so much. Um, and that's all I have.